What I want to do now is to go back and look at some uh, scriptures in the Bible, some things in the Bible that to me show the supremacy of, of Peter among the apostles. In other words, that he had a preeminent position among them. Uh, one thing I do want to clear up that I may not have mentioned in the last video where some people have talked about in Matthew uh, 18 where all of the apostles were given the authority to bind and loosen. And while that is true, uh, you'll notice that only Peter was given those keys, though. So let's look at some things in the Bible that I can point to that we can uh, actually discuss. When you look at Peter's name in the Bible, it is mentioned more. It is mentioned next to Jesus. It is mentioned more than any of the other apostles, some 152 times. And if you will look in uh, Matthew 19:27, Acts 1:15. In Acts 2.14, you'll see there where it appears that Peter is, is speaking uh, for the apostles. In each place there, uh, Peter is the one doing the speaking. And when you begin to look at uh, the places where the apostles are spoken about, uh, Peter is always listed first. Uh, the disciples are referred to as, as in this way in Acts 2.37 and Acts 5.29 where it says they're referred to as Peter and the Apostles, as though Peter had some preeminent position there among the, the Apostles. <clears throat> One of the uh, key things, too, that I feel that some people fail to realize is the preeminent position that Peter held at the Council of Jerusalem, which was in about 49-50 A.D. There are those there who had this, what they call the James argument, where James actually spoke for the apostles and it wasn't Peter. But if you will go back to that and read it in sequence, you'll see that where the apostles came together in 15, 1 through 6, and begin discussing the matters that had been brought before them. After that, in verse 7, Peter is the first one to come out and declare what they had talked about and to issue the, de the decree there that Yes, the Gentiles were accepted into the church and they didn't have to be circumcised and so forth. But it is Peter, once this, once these apostles had met in verse uh, uh, 7 of chapter 15 of Acts, Peter's the one that comes out and begins to talk first. After that is when James speaks out. Being the bishop there in Jerusalem, he, naturally he would have had uh, an opportunity to, to, to speak. <clears throat> and he did speak. But it was only after Peter had so it can be very, very easily argued that Peter was the had the preeminent, preeminent position there. He spoke first, and then uh, James came out and pretty much confirmed, yes, this is what this is what we believe. So to say that uh, you know, the James argument to me is a little bit uh, uh, dubious there because it uh, may not be that way at all. Uh, again, in fact, in chapter 15, verse 7, Peter is the first one that comes out and does the speaking. And James speaks act afterwards as though he is uh, confirming what they had all ag agreed on. <clears throat> and there, there comes some there comes some confusion here too as to uh, the Galatians uh, chapters that deal with uh, Paul was standing uh, Peter to his face. Uh, many made an argument about that where uh, Paul was rebuking uh, Peter. But I want to add something to it where I don't think that there was a rebuking going on. And I know I guess I go a lot of, I go against a lot of scholars in saying this, but let me give you my take on what I think is happening there. First of all, uh, some three years after uh, Paul's conversion, uh, Paul and Peter met. You can read that in Galatians chapter 1 where they met. And they were together for about 15 days. Now, there, there's nothing there that tells us what they talked about. It just simply states that they were, they met uh, and were together for about 15 days. James was there with them. Then they uh, parted, uh, parted their ways there, and it wasn't again until later, some 10, 12 years later maybe, at the Council of Jerusalem, till they met again. And uh, the question seemed to, to uh, uh, go around Peter's treatment of the uh, Gentiles and Paul questioned him about them, withdrawing from them and acting, act, acting like a hypocrite. Now let me go back and, 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 and go back to the, the Bible on this. First of all, 
this issue with the Gentiles had already been settled for Peter. If you'll go back and read Acts chapter 10, you will find one there where God gave him the vision of going down to the house of Cornelius to preach the gospel to him. And Peter, at first, Peter was a little reluctant. And that's when this table was let, let down from heaven with all these unclean animals on it. And uh, God pretty much reveals to him, what I've clean, uh, cleansed, let no man call unclean. So Peter then goes down to the house of Cornelius, tells them about Jesus Christ, that house is converted to Christianity, uh, uh, along with Cornelius. And then when, when uh, Peter leaves there, the Jews begin to question Peter about what, what he's doing down there. If you read all of chapter 10 and 11, you will see that, uh, that when Peter leaves the house of Cornelius, he goes back and explains to them that he had received this vision from God to go down to the house of Cornelius and to preach to them the gospel. And they uh, accepted Peter's uh, explanation of what had taken place. So in Peter's mind, he had already cleared this thing up about the Gentiles and they were accepted into the Christian world without circumcision without any of the mosaic laws attached to it or whatever in his mind it, this has already been settled but if you begin to read in, in chapter 15 of uh, Acts and in Galatians there were certain of these Judaizers or these Jews who had gone to Antioch and it, it appears to me they were uh, doing nothing more than spreading rumors uh, and to Paul it appeared though they were trying to undermine his ministry and it doesn't tell us what they were telling Paul but they, they had gone there and uh, basically to stir up the church, so to speak. And here's Paul up here. His life is at stake. He's risking his life for the gospel of the kingdom. And here these people come in with these, what I call them, nothing more than rumors, uh, uh, telling Paul uh, things that maybe Peter may be doing, or Peter thinks uh, maybe Paul is doing. And I see it as an effort on Paul's part to meet with Peter face to face, to clear these issues up so that they will know they're on the right page and that the true gospel of Jesus Christ is being spread. That Paul wasn't out preaching another gospel. Peter wasn't down in Jerusalem preaching another gospel. They were both preaching the same gospel. And I feel that these uh, Judaizers who had gone to him, who had stirred up this trouble, were doing nothing more than trying to cause a split between Paul and Peter. And that Peter acting like a rational person, Paul acting like a rational person, came together to be sure that they were on the right page. This was a crucial moment in the time of the church. And it appears to me that Paul and Peter came together to clear this issue up, to be sure they were on the same page and that the gospel message of Jesus Christ was indeed being preached the same to everyone. So while other people may look at that as a rebuking by Paul on Peter, uh, it, it eludes me because of the other evidence in the Bible that it shows where Peter had already accepted this and that where Peter had already uh, been shown by God that the Gentiles were accepted into the church without these attachments to it that came uh, under the Mosaic Law, which again was cleared up in the council, in the, at the Council of Jerusalem as well. And two, you'll see that when this council took place, that Peter came down to Jerusalem. Uh, the correction there, Paul came down to Jerusalem, that is. Peter didn't go up to Antioch. He did go up to Antioch with James in, in, in Galatians. But where, when that council took place, that Peter uh, was there in Jerusalem, and Paul came down to him. The apostles met. Peter came out and spoke for the church, and it was affirmed then by what, Barnum, by what James was saying. So this James argument, to me, just doesn't carry a, a, lot, of, a lot of weight to it. And uh, again, you, you'll find the preeminence of Peter's uh, spot if you, if you can look at it like that. In uh, John chapter 20, verse 4, where, they, where John and Peter are on the way to the tomb, uh, John gets there and looks into the tomb but doesn't go in. He stops and waits till Peter goes, gets there. And Peter goes in first, and then John goes in after him and believes that Jesus Christ is resurrected too. Now, that, that's not a proof text, but it, it does show there somehow in John's mind for some reason, he felt that Peter needed to be the first one to go in there and not, and not himself. And uh, he, so he waited for Peter uh, to get in, and then he went in, went in. I have to end this video now. My time is running out. But I think I've shown uh, places in the scripture where it's clear to me that Peter was shown a preeminent spot among the apostles. More in my next video, and thank you.